Welcome to the IntelliJoint's Complete eLearning course. In these sessions, you will complete several exercises that will teach you about the concepts used in creating and editing IntelliJoint's in Solid. The ability to implement IntelliJoint's will allow you to add your own intelligent machining to Solid. Before we get into the mechanics of adding IntelliJoint's to objects, it is important to get an understanding of some background topics that will be used during this e-learning course. In order to get the most out of this e-learning course, you need to be very familiar with the concepts of object intelligence and user-created standards. If you are unsure of your familiarity with these subjects, it is highly recommended that you take the Object Intelligence Complete and User Created Standards Complete e-learning courses. The first thing that we need to tackle is the question, what is an IntelliJoint? The best way to answer that question is to show examples. In this picture, you can see an adjustable shelf inside a cabinet. Inside the red circle, you can see the joint between the adjustable shelf and the side of this cabinet. If you look closely, you can see that there are some line boring holes that have been drilled in the cabinet end. There are a total of three holes. If you look at this wireframe view of another base cabinet, you can see that we have two adjustable shelves, both with a set of line bores based on the location of that shelf. Even the narrow shelf has a set of line bore holes situated relative to that shelf's position. If I were to remove those shelves from this cabinet, the holes would automatically disappear as well. This is a good illustration of exactly how an IntelliJoint works. When two parts come together in the manner specified by the IntelliJoint, operations are performed on one or both of those parts. These two parts are referred to as the slave part and the master part. The master part is the one that is the key for the joint. The master part sets into or demands a place on the slave. When two parts intersect, the master is typically the one that butts into the slave part. Generally, the master's edge touches the slave's face. In the example on the screen, the adjustable shelf is the master part and the cabinet ends are the slaves. Without the adjustable shelf, there would be no need to have the operations performed. This illustration shows the relationship between the master and slave parts. Notice that the IntelliJoint appears between the parts and must take up that space exactly. Therefore, if the master part is an adjustable shelf and the slave is the cabinet end, the thickness of the IntelliJoint must be the same as the space between the shelf and the end in order for the IntelliJoint to perform. Think of an IntelliJoint as a piece of double-sided tape. The tape must touch both surfaces in order to stick them together properly. The same concept applies to an IntelliJoint. This is a look inside the IntelliJoint catalog at the IntelliJoint that we just saw with the line boring for adjustable shelves. This IntelliJoint creates three holes in an end panel or partition every time an adjustable shelf is placed. This would be a good time for you to pause this movie and take a look at the IntelliJoint's Complete PDF booklet that accompanied this e-learning course. Look at the section called IntelliJoint Interface. This section of the booklet describes the IntelliJoint catalog in depth. Here in the preview window, you can see an example of how this IntelliJoint would look if it were to be applied to the adjustable shelf cabinet end joint. This illustration shows a perfect example of a situation where an IntelliJoint can be helpful. This illustration shows a mini fix type fitting that is used to create this assembly joint. There are three operations that must be performed on two different parts for this joint. Some of the operations will be on the slave part and some will be on the master. There are some basic steps that should be followed when using IntelliJoints. These are somewhat simplistic, but they do illustrate the thought process that you should be going through. First, describe what the IntelliJoint's requirements are. It may be helpful to sketch it out. Second, create the IntelliJoint in the IntelliJoint catalog. Third, place the IntelliJoint on a sample part manually to make sure that it works. Fourth, make any necessary changes. And finally, Use a UCS to automatically apply the IntelliJoint. This concludes Session 1 of IntelliJoints Complete. If you want to repeat this session, click the Replay Session button. Or, to move ahead to Session 2, return to the main menu.